And that's the critical question. What is our calling today with respect to our heritage? Our heritage as regards the public worship of God in Kelvin and in the Reformation. Are we motivated? As we ought to be motivated, you must examine yourself and I examine myself tonight. Are we motivated? As we ought to be motivated in our worship by love for God and gratitude to God. It doesn't come to it, does it? That we go to church on Sunday merely because this is a habit with us, merely a custom. It isn't the case, is it, that you go to church on Sunday only because your parents insist upon it, which they ought to, and I'm sure they do, but it isn't only that, is it? It isn't just to please the elders and to avoid a meeting with the elders, is it? It's love for God and the desire to show gratitude to God, is it not? And with respect to that matter of reverence, does it come to it that there is a breakdown, a breakdown even in our own Protestant Reformed churches as regards this matter of the reverence for God in worship. A reverence for God, I would insist upon it, that shows itself even in our dress and in our speech in the house of God. They dress like they're going to the beach or to the mall, or on a picnic. Not because they're going to stand before the great king of all the earth, the Lord of all lords, reverence in worship, a reverence motivated by a proper fear of God. But as for me, says the psalmist in Psalm 5, verse 7, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy, and in thy fear will I worship for thy holy temple. And what about the centrality of the word? Let's end with that. Tonight, Who can deny that at our worship services, the word is central. The preaching of the word gets the focus. But would we have it so? Is this our delight? The hearing of the gospel of grace. A hearing of the truth of the sacred scriptures as that truth is opened up to us. The scriptures are expounded and they are applied. Do we delight in it? And is it our earnest desire that it be so, not only for us, but for our children and for our grandchildren? This must be, must continue to be, the heart of our worship. Calvin once more, therefore, 
Although they put forward temple, priesthood, and the rest of the outward shows, this empty glitter which blinds the eyes of the simple ought not to move us a whit to grant that the church exists where God's word is not preached. For this is the abiding mark with which our Lord has sealed his own, everyone who is of the truth, hears my voice. Thank you for your attention.